Alright guys, what's going on and welcome back to my guide to building your own gaming PC. This, this episode we're going to have a look at RAM and hard drives in particular. So let's get started and have a look at the RAM. Now as you will probably know, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. It's those sticks of on the motherboard, I pointed them out in the motherboard episode, those long thin slots. It comes in a few forms but we're only going to be discussing DDR3 RAM as DDR2 RAM is obsolete now, DDR, just DDR RAM is, well, non-existent, that's a dinosaur. All computers nowadays use DDR3, or next to all computers anyway. Now, there is a common misconception that's semi-true about more RAM means more speed, and this is kind of true and kind of not true. What your RAM actually is, is when your program's running in your computer, they need, require memory to be sent off, you know, stuff to be stored for the processor to can handle it later. And you know, it's running through the memory all the time. The RAM is constantly being written and wrote to. It's very fast. So to maximize the speed of your system, you need enough memory to be able to handle all the things you're running. But putting too much in is just pointless because you're not going to use it all. However, it is a good idea to put as, as much in as you can afford without compromising the rest of your computer. In other words, RAM is on, on the list of things to buy. RAM is, you know, priority-wise, priority, priority wise, quite low in terms of how much you actually need. Now, also, recently, RAM prices have taken a massive tumble in price. We're talking huge tumble. A good example is that I'm using Corsair Vengeance 1600 megahertz memory, and I bought eight gigs of that at the start of the summer for 82 euro. Now, the same memory, 16 gigs, basically twice the amount of sticks, is now costing 82 euro. That's just got to show that in, how long is that, eight months? Six months, the price has fallen by half again. RAM prices are tumbling down and you can get a lot of RAM now for almost next to nothing. So a good place to start when actually go, going out to buy your RAM will be to try and select quality memory. Don't I don't like the cheapest stuff because that tends to fail and if you have a bad RAM stick it can be a very long and annoying time trying to find it. So what I'd recommend is stick to Corsair Vengeance memory or stick to somewhere, you know, a reputable manufacturer. Don't go for the odd manufacturer that has the 4 gig stick for 5 cents. That's not a very good choice. Now when it comes down to the amount of RAM you want, ideally you're going to need 4 gigs. End of story, anything less than 4 gigs nowadays is a joke, to be quite honest. You're going to be blasting through 2 gigs of memory. I myself had 2, two gig sticks before and one of them failed and I was running on 2 gigs for 2 weeks. And that was a nightmare. Because when your RAM runs out, it starts overspilling to your hard drive. And your hard drive is a hell of a lot slower than your RAM and it just takes things forever. Your hard drive is trying to read and write that data and it's an absolute disaster. Now when you're building a gaming PC, 8 gigs of RAM, fine for everything you want to do. Perfect. 45 quid to 50 quid, you've got 8 gigs of RAM fairly easily. Uh, 4 gigs of RAM will set you back maybe 30 to 40 euros in around that area, but just go buy 8 gigs of RAM and you can always upgrade and stick in another 8 gigs later or 4 gigs and stick in another 4 later. Now when it comes down to the amount of slots on your motherboard, some motherboards have more than others. Obviously this particular one I'm showing has 6, my one actually has 4. Now some motherboards come in what's called dual and triple channel forms. In other words, dual channel means you'll get more performance if you just stick 2 sticks in and run them together or 4 sticks. Well, triple channel works best if you run them in sets of three. Now you can mix and match different RAMs, different speeds, and everything. But you know, for best compatibility and best performance, just stick two of the same type of RAM in. I mean, you're going to get them in a set anyway. Just stick two of them in. Now, when it comes to RAM frequency, um, there's a couple of different ones: 1066, 1333, I think, 1600, 1800, 2000. Uh, bigger is better, right? Well, not necessarily. When it comes to your RAM frequency, you're really not going to notice a huge amount of difference if running like 1066 and 1600, but if you want a safe bet, just go with 1600 memory. 
I mean, it's it's not that much more expensive. In fact, it probably isn't any more expensive. Just you know, running with 1600 megahertz memory is pretty good. Now, another thing you can do is overclocking your RAM. But don't bother buying expensive overclocking RAM for your first build anyway, because to be quite honest, RAM really, when it's overclocked, doesn't affect the performance of your system enough to make it truly worthwhile. In other words, overclocking your RAM will give you a tiny a performance boost, but it's so small you won't even really notice it. So, you know, just buy good quality RAM. Um, if you get a dead stick of RAM, which happens really commonly, or a RAM stick dies, uh, just you know, start swapping the sticks and taking them in now. Try and find if it's a bad slot or a bad RAM stick, or you can just use Google rather than go after me, which I'd much rather if you used for future questions. But when it comes down to the end of it, you can look up benchmarks and all, but really overclocking your RAM isn't worth the hassle in my opinion. It can be very finicky and it can make your system unpredictably unstable. In other words, it will appear stable for a while and then just suddenly crash or it could do weird things to your computer. So I just you know, recommend for a gaming PC, 8 gigs of RAM, about 50 euros. Get decent memory, 1600 megahertz or 1333. I think that's the other frequency. I'm not 100% sure. I know it's 13 something. And you know, you're sorted then in terms of your RAM. Now, some of you may recognize this bad boy. That's a PATA cable or an IDE cable because now we're just starting to discuss hard drives themselves. Now, as you may know, hard drives recently took a massive price leap. In other words, the prices have skyrocketed. Because in Thailand, there has been a flood which wiped out the reading head manufacturing plant. In other words, hard drives, a certain part of them are in short enough supply. And it's going to take 8 months to a year for the hard drive you know, manufacturing to return to what capacity it was at. So, short supply, high demand, prices rise very, very, very quickly. A uh, good example of this is I bought two Samsung Spinpoint F3 1TB drives very good drive and they I bought them for 52 euros each last Halloween in other words about a year and three months ago now those hard drives are 129 euros each they're almost triple the price because of the hard drive shortage there has been a massive increase in hard drive prices so go salvage those old drives start ripping them out of old computers Grab the IDE cable if you happen to have a large IDE drive. If you happen to have one, I kind of doubt it. But, but when you're buying hard drives, there is one tip I can give you. Buy big. Uh, when it comes down to it, the bigger drives now are tend to be a bit more value because a 500 gig drive will cost you 110 euros, let's say, or whatever. A one terabyte will cost you 130, but a two terabyte will cost you maybe 210. So as you go up, the uh, price per gigabyte falls. So overall you're getting better value. Think of it as buying storage in bulk. Now, when it comes down to hard drive connectors, there are two. Uh, the old fugly pata, which is the bottom drive with the 24 pin socket. I think it's 24 pins and the four pin Molex power. This hard drive is next to obsolete and only if you're salvaging old drives will you need to make use of that bad boy ribbon cable. Now when it comes down to the more modern hard drives you have what's called the SATA standard or parallel, no, parallel advanced technology attachment PATA is what IDE is while the SATA standard is serial advanced technology attachment or SATA. Now when it comes down to SATA the cables are much smaller and easier to manage but also have more bandwidth. Now, SATA itself actually comes in a few different flavors on its own. So the first one is the standard SATA 1 connection, which can handle a total of 1.5 gigabits per second, which turns into 150 megabytes per second. The second is the SATA 2 connector, which, uses, which can run at 3 gigabits per second or 3 megabytes per second. Don't forget it's 8 bits to a byte. Now the third one is SATA 3 which can run at 6 gigabits per second which is 
600 megabytes per second. Now you're probably thinking, why all the different specs, you know? Why the more bandwidth? Well that's because as hard drives get faster and faster and SSDs get faster and faster and faster, they require more and more data to run at max performance because if you're running an SSD you can read and write at let's say 500 megabytes a second but you're, you're only running at SATA 3 then you're choking your SSD with the cables. Now I said there's different ports, they're not actually different, they're all the same port, just, it's literally just a matter of putting the cable in and all the cables are the same so it doesn't really matter when it comes down to it. However for SATA 3 or 6 gigabit a second SATA I'm not 100% sure, but I think there may be a diff something different about the cable. It's worth, you know, if you buy an SSD, you're more than likely going to get a SATA 3 cable with it. Uh, use that if you can. Or your motherboard, if it has SATA 6 ports, not SATA 6, SATA 3 ports, it's going to come onto it anyway. It's going to come with it, so, you know, use that to connect up your SSD. Um, if you're not planning on using an SSD for right now, or looking to upgrade to one in the future, get a motherboard with SATA 3 and get yourself a good quality SSD. And on the topic of SSD, by the way, SSD stands for a solid state drive. If you say SSD drive, you're saying solid state drive drive, which drives me crackers. So don't, don't say that, please. It just really annoys me. But the um, solid states themselves are incredibly fast storage. And their main advantage, however, access is in access time, or how fast the thing can find the data. A hard drive contains motors and rotating disks called platters and reading heads. In other words, your drive has to physically find where the data is stored on the disk. However, with an SSD, it's all just memory chips. And in theory, you can access all the SSD simultaneously. In theory kind of true kind of not true but the thing is when your SSD starts to fill up it doesn't slow down your computer because if your RAM overspills it can still access those bits of your SSD that are empty. Now SSDs don't actually improve gaming performance. They don't improve you know your frame rate or anything like that. What they will improve is loading times and boot times. Your computer will boot incredibly fast on a solid state drive and games will load much much faster on a solid state drive. A good example of this would be Battlefield 3 which currently takes quite a bit of time to load off a hard drive. However on a solid state drive it can take less than 10 seconds. It's absolutely ridiculous how short it takes to load games, like well big games anyway like Battlefield 3 and Crisis 2. When buying SSDs you're going to need to start looking up benchmarks for these yourself but if I had to pick one SSD to recommend, I would recommend a Crucial M4 SSD because I have one, I've had no trouble with it, but I don't have any experience with any other SSD. So you need to start looking up forms and things for yourself at this stage. Uh, you know, SSDs are really cool, they're really fast, and they're well worth having a look into. However, that extra performance comes at a steeper price obviously. For a 64 gigabyte SSD you're now looking at about 100 euro. Now the Crucial M4 is one of the fastest out there. The Vertex 3 is another very fast SSD but I hear there's issues with a Vertex 3. I'm not going to go into detail on that or anything but you know it's about 100 euro for 64 gigs of the fast SSDs. Um, you know it's about oh, and about 200 euro for you know, 128 gigabyte SSDs and the price scales, you know, fairly linear, fairly linearly. Or in other words, you know, there's no massive jump up in price to performance like graphics cards have or CPUs have. But in general, I mean, look into buying an SSD, they're very fast, particularly now, uh, the SSD prices are going to start falling quite rapidly. And recently, Intel has just uh, announced that they made 128 gigabyte RAM or NAND which is the type of memory in an SSD which is going to make higher capacity SSDs cheaper and old generation SSDs which are still plenty fast much cheaper as well. Alright guys so I hope you have enjoyed this episode of guide to building your gaming PC we, and as you know we covered RAM and hard drives 
Uh, next episode, we're more than likely going to go into either graphics cards or power supplies case and cases and cooling. They're the two last episodes we have to discuss. And then we're going to move on to tearing down a computer and rebuilding it. Because my computer needs a good cleaning, so I'm going to rebuild my entire computer on camera in step-by-step -step guides for you guys to enjoy and learn how to actually physically build your computer. But anyway guys, as always it has been good talk and I'll see you out there.